Hello everyone, welcome back to the Aya Today channel. Today is our second installment of our Aya 101 series and I'll be talking to you about liberalism. Liberalism is one of the core traditions of Aya. It fundamentally believes in the power of cooperation over power and conflict. It is a theory for both the international and the domestic levels. Uh, in it, constitutional liberal democracies uh, by their nature, according to liberalism, seek forms of peaceful cooperation fueled by rational self-interest to achieve prosperity. Uh, because of institutionalization and of the international order which liberalism creates, the need and possibility for war as a central theme of IR dissipates. So liberalism proposes that individuals at their core desire freedom and prosperity. So democracy and trade will expand because of this need, which leads naturally to the growth of international law and organization to facilitate these processes. So it is a theory of how states act in the, inter in the, in the international arena, but also emphasize the domestic structures of state because the domestic structures then characterize international. Uh, for there to be a cooperating world, states require to have a stable democ democratic government uh, as they are the most suitable for creating this kind of liberal world order. Uh, this serves as a foundation for democratic peace theory, which is a key tenet of, of liberalism, which is the idea that democratic states do not go to war with each other because it's too costly and democratic publics won't allow it. Uh, for this to apply, uh, the whole world does not need to embrace liberalism. For example, John Eikenberry prop, uh, posits that uh, the US operates in a liberal way towards, for example, European powers and Japan and Southeast Asia, but then operates more in a more realistic tradition towards other places in the world. Moreover, liberalism is often criticized as being idealistic, but liberalism does not have, have the assumption that it desires to make the world a better place but it is fundamentally based on the assumptions that states are self-interested and through this self-interest they will seek a more cooperative path because, as opposed to the destructive path of conflict and war. So the key assumption in liberalism is the rationality of actors and the self-interest of them. And this self-interest is um, put forward for cooperation rather than conflict. And this is especially the case with democratic states. Uh, liberalism has many strands where they believe that, that uh, all states are more cooperative in nature, but in most cases it's about democratic states and their character making them act in a more cooperative way. In liberalism, uh, the key, some of the key authors include Immanuel Kant, the German philosopher who is seen as the founder really of, of, of liberalism as we know it. He, he proposes in his famous book The Perpetual Peace that states um, will, the states should operate in an open diplomatic way, no secret treaties, for example. He continues to propose rep a republican constitutional order for states and a federation of free states where they can have mutual cooperation, reducing again the prospects of war and increasing uh, possibilities of, again, perpetual peace and how it, how it is achieved. Uh, then, following on that, Michael Doyle, he updates Kantian uh, idea of liberal peace on his book, The Ways of War and Peace. He traces the development of liberalism from a historical perspective and comparing it to realist and Marxist readings of international history. And then lastly, some of the prominent neoliberal theorists include Joseph Nye, the creator of the, of the soft power concept, uh, together with um, Robert Kiyohe. So, for real-life examples of liberalism at work, maybe the most classic example here is the European Union. The continent was torn after two devastating world wars in the early 20th century. So the European Union was created to bind the nations of Europe together and has been quite rather successful in it. It has, at its core, tenants, again, um, a democratic constitutional order, free trade, these kind of very liberal principles. And whatever one may, might think of the EU, the fact is that on the European continent there hasn't been a major war for a very, very long time. Actually, it's a historic uh, achievement. And then more generally, the web of international treaties and organizations uh, are manifest manifestations of, of liberal principles. Uh, international law governs state practice, a UN was created to encourage state, state cooperation, and a WTO was created to enhance um, 
the promotion of uh, international trade, for example. So liberalism is really everywhere you look, look in the world. Anything that, that has to do with interstate relations, there's usually aspects of, of liberalism in that. So the reason why I consider myself as a bit of a liberal in my theoretical outlook is that, look, no um, theory is perfect and no theory is all-encompassing. But as Eikenberry puts it in, in his text, for example, liberalism in a specific context, for example, in, in Western states, in the European Union, in, from the UN system-wide standpoint, uh, it does provide a rational framework on how, how states interact and what are the key drivers behind state interaction. I believe, for example, that realism provides a too simplistic way of looking at the world, for example, the state of nature. So, and, and liberalism is just much more comprehensive on understanding the, the structures and the motivations that drive states forward and what, mis what decisions they ultimately make. So that's my point of view. So this has been our IR 101 on liberalism. I hope you enjoyed it and please come back for the next episode.